everyone. Welcome to episode 34 of Pivs NXT Point of View Podcast. My name is Bill Pivots. If you want, follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. Rate and review this podcast on iTunes, Podbean, or wherever else you guys get your podcast from. Uh, this episode, I will be reviewing the NXT TakeOver Respect show that took place on Wednesday, October 7th. Uh, it was about a two and a half hour show, a little longer than the usual TakeOver specials, uh, but just as good. Uh, there were some really good matches on the card, uh, really good, really cool moments as well. The first match on the show was the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. It was Finn Balor and Samoa Joe against Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. Before I get started, my predictions were nowhere close uh, to what the, what actually happened on the show, um, which is good in a sense that it wasn't too predictable, but uh, um, I was hoping for, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a road to the future per se for the uh, tag team division. Beginning of the match, Dawson and Wilder were uh, targeting the left knee of Finn Balor, uh, just making it hard for him to walk on, do any of his uh, signature moves. Um, he did eventually make the hot tag to Samoa Joe. Uh, Joe was able to perform his uh, top moves on Wilder. As Joe was hitting the muscle buster, Balor tagged in, and Balor finished him up with the coup de gras. After the coup de gras, uh, after he landed, Balor was favoring that left knee a little bit. It was hard for him to make the cover. Joe looked a little concerned. So as you can tell, they're planting the seeds for the finals just to give him a little handicap uh, heading into that last match. But after the match, Joe was asking uh, Balor uh, about his leg, and uh, Balor was assuring him that he was okay to compete in the finals later on. As I did predict on last week's show, I was expecting Dash and uh, Dawson to win this match, hoping for a uh, a new tag team to be brought up into the mix, give him another, give the tag team champions a credible challenge. Because I would like to see um, Dash and Dawson against the Vaude Villains tag team title match down the road. But with the way things played out, it made sense for Joe and Balor to win this match. Second match on the card was Jason Jordan and Chad Gable against Baron Corbin and Rhino in the second semifinals match. Uh, Rhino and Gable started the match off. Rhino was dominating him early. Gable was able to come back, but he did up at ringside as Corbin was wearing him down. Gable avoided the Rhino splash in the corner, and he was able to make the hot tag to his partner, uh, Jason Jordan, or JJ. A little later, Gable had uh, Corbin around the waist, threw, ran him into the turnbuckle, and then landed a nice roll-through German suplex into a uh, pin combination. Nice spot there, especially the pound difference, the weight difference between the two of Chad Gable and Baron Corbin. Uh, just impressive to see him deadlift Baron Corbin over his head. Uh, Rhino gored Jordan after he broke up the pin, and they rolled out to ringside. Uh, Gable came off the ropes, going for another tilt to world slam, but Corbin caught him and hit the end of days to win. So we have Finn Balor and Samoa Joe against Rhino and Baron Corbin. We've seen this match before. I was a little upset at that. We've seen this on an NXT main event before. But, I mean, you're going to go with what you know. Um, and they're the two best teams. Granted, they're not two real teams. They're kind of makeshift at this point. We've seen this match before, so I was a little little disappointed in that. But it was a really good match. I actually preferred this match over the uh, Finn Balor-Samoa Joe match, uh, their tag match earlier. Um, just very exciting. I was really hoping for Chad Gable and JJ to win this match. There was a couple spots that I thought they would have won, especially after that German suplex to Baron Corbin. I was just a little disappointed at the outcome, but I was invested in this match the whole time. Third match on the card was the debuting Asuka against Dana Brooke. Graves did say that Asuka signing with NXT was the highest profile signing in women's history, and in all of wrestling at least, I would probably say that's one of the top ones, especially for the WWE side. I mean, granted when Awesome Khan came in, but her run didn't last as long. Um, and maybe when Medusa went over to WCW the second time, that's one of the higher profile ones. But definitely in this day and age, the women's division really doesn't get that that spotlight shown on them with free agents. So this was definitely um, this was definitely putting Asuka over. Uh, early in the match, Asuka was working the arm over. Uh, they went to ringside a bit, and Brooke was able to get back in the ring, uh, allowing Emma to interfere, trapping Asuka in between the apron, and Dana took control off that. Uh, Asuka caught uh, Brooke in a nice arm bar. She gave it up after she got the ropes and then just kicked her right in the head. Emma then climbed on the apron trying to distract Asuka again, and Asuka caught her with an uh, elbow to the face. She then landed another, another kick to uh, Dana Brooke and locked her in the Asuka lock, which is like a chick, chicken wing uh, cross-face submission, and got the win. And after the match, Asuka just connected with a kick to Dana Brooke, much to the delight of the crowd. She then left the ring and then just stared down Emma, who kind of turned away, not giving her the time of day, as she walked up the ramp. Uh, this was a nice debut. It was a really good match. Um, not the best women's match. Uh, it was definitely a strong debut for Asuka. A very good showing from her, considering some of the, most of the NXT fans haven't seen any of her work. Um, Dana Brooke definitely held her own, but you could definitely tell Asuka was leading this match, um, controlling the match. Dana Brooke was able to keep control, and they had a really nice chemistry, uh, surprisingly, with each other. 
they played off each other really nicely. A nice contrast of moves. Dana Brooke was a little more aggressive. Uh, Asuka was a little showy with her kicks. A little more flash to her. I liked it. Um, Dana Brooke's definitely improved. i got to give her credit. And Asuka, very nice debut. I'm going to... Maybe if they go with Dana and Emma, not Dana and Emma, uh, if they go with Asuka and Emma, uh, that could definitely be a better match, but this was a, this was a good match. Definitely a good match. We had a backstage segment look, having a uh, trainer look at uh, Finn Balor's knee. He showed a little pain. Uh, Joe was watching him, um, just playing up that the knee injury leading into the uh, Dusty Rhodes Classic Finals. Another Nia Jax vignette, uh, but it did say her debut will be next week, so it's finally going to happen. We got another uh, woman debuting on the NXT roster. So even with Charlotte, Sasha, and uh, Becky Lynch gone, we're definitely getting some nice influx of new women on this roster to give Bailey some uh, some competition. Fourth match was the Apollo Crews and Tyler Breeze match. Uh, Crews was in control uh, early on. He landed a nice vertical suplex, just holding Tyler Breeze up in the air for a long time. Breeze was going after the knees of Apollo Crews and then kicked him in the face and then knocked him out at ringside. He then ran him into the apron back first and rolled back in the ring for a quick two count. Breeze, a little later, locked in the sharpshooter. Cruz almost tapped, but he was able to reach the ropes. A little later, after the sharpshooter, Cruz flipped over the ropes and over Breeze, but he was selling his knee a little bit. And Breeze uh, blasted him with a nice kick to the face, I believe. Face of the head area. Uh, but he was able to kick out. Apollo Cruz then caught Tyler Breeze coming off the ropes and landed a nice power slam, but Breeze was able to kick out. Uh, Cruz landed the uh, press slam, and as he went for the moonsault, Breeze held onto his leg, preventing him from doing the move. Cruz fought free and landed the move, but Tyler Breeze put his knees up. Uh, he rolled them up after that and got a nice uh, near fall from a small package. Cruz came back with a kick to the face uh, as Breeze was running towards him. Cruz then caught him for a uh, powerbomb and got the win. So it was nice to see that Apollo Cruz, as he could tell, his finisher, his true finisher wasn't going to work, so we had to come up with something different, and he was able to land the powerbomb to get the win. Uh, so it was another nice showing, obviously, uh, for Apollo Crews. He's not going to lose anytime soon. Yeah, they're definitely building Apollo Crews up for something, but where that's going to lead, maybe an NXT title match down the line, I'm not sure, but it's. Um, I think the fans are invested in him. They're, they like him a lot, and, and he's definitely going to go places. He's not stagnant right now. This, they're not squash matches, per se. He's getting good competition, unlike some of the other people on the NXT roster. The only thing that I'm worried about is um, what's going to happen to Tyler Breeze. Yet another big match that he lost. Um it's, I can't even recall how many big matches. The, obviously, the most recent ones were against uh, Juice and Liger at Brooklyn and this match against Apollo Crews. Um, unless they're building to something, if he's going to go after William Regal, I'm not sure. But at this point, he's no different than Solomon Crow. Uh, he's a big name, but he's just not getting any credible wins to give the fans something to get behind when he does win. Um, so it, it, he looks like a lost cause. I hope that's not the case. I know they have big things planned for him, but from what it looks like from a regular fans perspective it's this guy keeps losing why should we care uh, when he enters and Tyler Breeze definitely doesn't need that if he's going to be main roster bound fifth match on the card was the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals between Finn Balor and Samoa Joe against Rhino and Baron Corbin after they all made entrances Balor was the last one out he definitely uh, noticed a slight limp as he was walking out but it was just a casual entrance he didn't really go all out uh, like we've seen in the first entrance but obviously they're playing up to the knee in a certain aspect Balor actually started this match off, and he connected with a dropkick to Baron Corbin, and you could tell he was working off one leg. The dropkick, he didn't get all of it, and he was able to tag in Joe, which gave him an out because he can't last long on that knee. Joe pretty much took most of the punishment in this match um, before he made the hot tag to Finn Balor. He leapt over the rope and entered the match. Rhino took a shot at his knee, sent him to the floor. Corbin then wrenched the leg around the ring post, just throwing it into the post, making Balor scream in agony. He was able to fight back, uh, but Corman slammed him down and got a nice two count out of it. Finn Balor then caught him with the sling blade off the ropes, and he tagged in Joe again, who then took out both Rhino and Corbin. Rhino was able to catch Joe with a gore, who went for a pin, but Balor broke it up. Balor then closed on Corbin to ringside and kicked him from the apron. Rhino then knocked Balor to the floor, leaving between uh, Rhino and Joe. Rhino set up for another gore, but Joe kicked him in the face, hit the muscle buster, and Balor hit the coup de gras at the end to get the win. Uh, so Finn Balor and Samoa Joe won the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. After the match, all of the Rhodes family, Goldust, Cody, um, all the sisters as well, um, entered the ring with the trophy. Cody had some words uh, saying that tonight we are all Rhodes. Uh, the crowd clapped. Uh, Dusty Rhodes music played. They all posed with the trophy. So it was a very nice moment. Um, and I get why they did it. They didn't want any heels winning. 
Um, just because of this moment, the Rhodes brothers, this is to honor Dusty, and you're going to have two guys like Finn Balor and Samoa Joe who respected Dusty Rhodes uh, treat him and that uh, tournament with respect. If you put two heels in there, Rhino, Corbin, Dash, and Dawson, or even uh, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, who I don't think would have done it to an extent, um, they definitely would have respected the trophy. They might have been a little arrogant about it, but I see, like I said, I see why they went with um, Joe and Balor for this. Like I said on the last week's show, I was expecting uh, them to lose based on Samoa Joe uh, turning on Finn Balor, whether he was being too greedy, too selfish, um, working on that leg, saying like maybe um, you should be on the outside or whatever, let me handle this. But whatever the case is, I think we're going to get that turn eventually. Um, but I, like I said, I, I, just, I don't think this was the right time to do it, considering all the circumstances around this uh, tournament. Sixth and final match of the night was Bailey versus Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship in a 30-minute Iron Man match. Uh, they got really great introductions, both of them. Uh, Bailey, obviously, her parents were in the crowd for this one as well. Izzy was at ringside. Uh, she plays along in, in the uh, match as well. It's an awesome spot. Um, the bell rang, and the two spent about a minute, minute and a half, just walking around, staring at each other, building up that intensity. Uh, the fans were buying it, too. They were going all out with, this is awesome, chance, well, women's wrestling, main event. Uh, they were going crazy before they even locked up. Um, a couple minutes into the match, Bailey went for her arm drags. Uh, she hit the first one. The second one um, kind of botched it. Sasha landed on her head again, um, and the announcers just reacted as such. Like it didn't, it didn't look good at all. Like, and they showed the replay slow motion. She got spiked on her head again, but Sasha got right back up. It really didn't affect her too much. Uh, Bailey did help Sasha Banks up from the corner, and they went to hug, but Sasha just attacked her like the heel that she is. Uh, a little later, the, Sasha was bickering with the referee. Bailey charged at the ref, and Sasha moved. Bailey stopped herself. Same thing happened. Sasha stopped herself. Then she shielded the referee, thumbed uh, Bailey in the eye, and got the first pin. And went up one nothing at around the 8.30 mark. A little later, uh, Sasha went for the double knees in the corner, but Bailey, um, but Bailey caught her and then dropped her on the top rope. She then performed the belly to Bailey suplex to even things up at one apiece. Sasha then took control for a good five, six minute stretch of the uh, match. Uh, throwing her against the stairs. Um, she did catch Bailey going for her dropkick between the ropes, caught her by the legs, and swung her into the steps. She threw her into the video screen in the uh, aisle way, and walked back to the ring, and got the, uh, got counted out. So Sasha Banks went up 2-1 at this point. Uh, the best part uh, was around this time, um, I think Sasha was taunting, Bailey was getting counted out. She grabbed Izzy's headband and was screaming at her at the most... Like, Throughout most of this, when she was throwing uh, Bailey into the staff, she was screaming at her. She then took her headband, wore it around, and pranced around the ring. And the camera showed Izzy um, crying into her father's arms. I'm laughing at this point because it just proves how great of a heel that Sasha is. And the whole um, little girls looking up to Bailey just rang so true in this match. Just seeing her, her hero lying on the ground and just Sasha just taunting all over her. Um, granted, there was a, a post, uh, I think earlier today on Thursday, with... Izzy holding up a sign that said, uh, hey, Sasha, if you wanted to wear my headband, you could just ask or something like that, which is a nice rebuttal. But just seeing Sasha rip the headband off this little girl and just dance around it, throw it at her, uh, just proves how much of a heel that she really is. Back in the ring, uh, Bailey was able to make it back. Uh, Sasha grabbed the legs and pulled her to the middle of the ring. But Bailey was able to counter and roll her up to even the match up at 2-2. And this is where things got intense. You could tell that they were definitely gassed. I don't know if it was true, but... They looked gassed because it's been around 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. Bailey clotheslined Sasha off the steps, but uh, Sasha then kicked her back into those ring steps. Sasha went for a uh, suicide dive, but Bailey caught her and hit the uh, belly to Bailey suplex on the floor, which then began a holy shit chant from the uh, crowd. I, I don't know who was warranted. It was definitely a uh, cool spot, but I don't know if the holy shit chants were uh, were necessary at that spot. I definitely think Sasha throwing uh, Bailey into the steps uh, was more of a uh, holy shit moment, but to each their own. About four minutes left, Bailey sat Sasha on the top rope. She punched her a couple times, um, and Sasha knocked her down. Bailey ran back up a la Kurt Angle and hit another uh, super Bailey to belly suplex. As she was rolling over, the momentum carried her. Uh, she went for the pin, but Sasha was able to get her foot on the rope, so the referee had to uh, had to stop the count. It was a cool spot because just the crowd was behind her, thinking that she would go up three uh, or three two. But Sasha, just the heel that she was at the last second, that sneaky sneaky foot was able to get on the ropes. Uh, before the referee counted. About two and a half minutes left at this point. Uh, she la- she went for a uh, reverse hurricanrana and connected, but Sasha landed on her uh, 
on her butt, so she didn't really get all of it. And Sasha hit the belly to Bailey suplex and got a two count of her own. Sasha continued with the uh, bank statement. It was about 30 seconds or so um, that she had it locked in, but because uh, Bailey attacked the hand early in the match, she really couldn't lock the full thing in. Her, I think it was her right hand. No, no, no. her left hand was just hanging there. Sasha was just grabbing her wrist. Couldn't really lock all of the uh, submission in. Uh, Bailey did fight her way out of it and slammed Sasha's hand into the mat. About 20 seconds left in at this point. Bailey locked in an arm bar and then was kicking Sasha in the head at the same time. The referee uh, signified that Sasha was tapping, uh, just shaking her head. I quit, I quit. Uh, rang the bell. There was about two seconds left at this point. So the bell rang, put Bailey up 3 2, and the bell rang to end the match. And Bailey is still your NXT Women's Champion. Uh, after the match, the whole locker room was out at ringside. Triple H and William Regal had flowers. Uh, Sasha walked up the ramp. William Regal handed her a bouquet of flowers. Triple H walked to the ring, handed Bailey the, um, the bouquet, her own bouquet of flowers, celebrated with her. And at this point, I wasn't expecting this, but Triple H just pedigreed Bailey and Nia Jax made her debut. No, I'm kidding. That would be awesome, though. Uh, just Triple H turning on Bailey like that. But uh, now Triple H and Bailey celebrated in the ring. The two uh, women were crying. Um, just one, because they're never going to have this match again now that Sasha's on the main roster. Maybe that's why Sasha was crying, realizing that she's no longer on NXT. But yeah, it was a great match uh, between the two of them. I don't think it was as great as the Brooklyn match. Uh, one, because I think the time limit kind of took the intensity out of this match. The fans knew um, that this was going to go 30 minutes, which the NXT, the one in Brooklyn, you really didn't know when this match was going to uh, when this match was going to end. But nonetheless, it was a great Iron Woman match. I guess I predicted the score right, um, three to two. I did talk myself out of it a little bit, expecting a two to one because of the um, the time limit. But I did say originally three to two, so I'm going to give myself a point for that one. Uh, but definitely the drama between this involving Izzy just having her cry, Sasha just doing the dirtiest things, throwing her into the steps, uh, smashing her hand against the steps, throwing her into the video screen. Uh, Bailey fighting uh, like the underdog that she is, just coming back from everything. Uh, it was a really good match, a really great story these two told, both matches between uh, Brooklyn and uh, this show as well. Uh, overall, um, it definitely wasn't the best TakeOver special. Um, I think some of the other matches, especially the earlier TakeOver specials in last year, uh, were a lot better. But overall, the, having the three tag team matches, they were all really good tag team matches as well. Uh, I think my favorite one was the Jason Jordan, Chad Gable, Baron Corbin, Rhino match. The Tyler Breeze, Apollo Crews match was good for what it was. The Asuka match, uh, she was amazing. She's very fluid in the ring. Um, really not many slip-ups, if any, that I remember between the two. Uh, maybe Dana hesitated a little bit. I would have to rewatch that match uh, just to double-check, but uh, a very good match. And then, obviously, the Iron Woman match was it was a good, good main event. I don't think any of the other matches, not even the finals, of the Dusty Classic could have been the main event, especially without the NXT title on the line. Uh, this was definitely um, the best choice for the main event. All right, guys, that was episode 34 of PIV's NXT Point of View podcast. Subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, rate, review. Follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. With that being said, I'll check you back next week. Peace.